To most of us, a bridge is something that takes us across a river, perhaps to work. To this man, it means a job for life, painting the great railway bridge over the Firth of Forth in Scotland. But to everyone in Britain, bridges have a special interest today, for with the new road programme, thousands more are needed. Seventy years ago, the fourth bridge was finished. It had taken 5,000 workmen seven years to build, and it cost three million pounds. Iron and steel ushered in the greatest period of bridge building this country had ever seen. And even after 70 years, no bridge in the country can compare with the fourth bridge in grandeur and size. Today, we are building more bridges than ever before in our history, more than during the Industrial Revolution, even more than the Romans built. Many of these new bridges are causing controversy, old-fashioned, out-of-date, ugly, shout the critics. Where are the lovely sweeping lines you see everywhere on the continent, they say? What has happened to British bridge designers? Are we indeed 20 years out of date? We used to lead the world in bridge design. In its day, the fourth bridge was an eighth wonder of the world. For all major bridges, the Ministry of Transport appoints a firm of consulting engineers who advise on the type of bridge needed and then submit a design. This design is put out to tender to contractors and the firm that submits the lowest tender normally gets the job of building the bridge. Many people think that the design of a bridge should also be open to competition. In this way, they say, our bridges will become better looking, more modern and cheaper. Cheapness, however, is not the first consideration. A bridge must be safe, not just for a year or two, but perhaps for centuries. Thousands of Britain's bridges are centuries old and still safe and sound. The Clopton Bridge was a hundred years old when Shakespeare was a boy. It is still the only bridge over the Avon at Stratford. The first iron bridge in the world was built in Shropshire in 1779. And with the Industrial Revolution and the coming of the railways, 25,000 bridges were built in the next 70 years. This was the age of the great designers. Thomas Telford, with his famous Menai suspension bridge connecting Anglesey to the mainland of North Wales. In 1826, this elegant bridge was finished. The first vehicle across was a mail coach. Robert Stevenson son of George, with his nearby Britannia railway bridge, crossing the Menai Straits to Clamf... to Clamf... <laughs> well, you can see where it is. But these great bridges took their toll of lives. Iron and steel had never been used on this scale before. The great designers were experimenting with a new material. Eisenbard Kingdom Brunel won a competition for the design of the Clifton Suspension Bridge when he was only 24. Competitions were common during Britain's greatest bridge building period. A strong argument for those who want to bring back competition in design. Abroad, British consulting engineers have designed tens of millions of pounds worth of bridges in the face of world competition. Australia's beautiful new Perth Narrows Bridge is one of them. But isn't it odd that so many of our top designers don't get similar chances in their own country? Many people say the ministry is too cautious. Others say you can't be too cautious about bridges. No one wants a bridge to fall down, like America's famous Galloping Gertie, which blew down in 1940. In war, there's no time to wait for bridges to fall down. They are blown up by the dozen, and temporary bridges have to be built like this famous Bailey Bridge over the Chinwin River in Burma. The new Minister of Transport thought it would be a good idea to use Bailey Bridging as a temporary measure to ease a few of the countless bottlenecks on our crowded roads. At a busy junction on the Kingston Bypass, the Minister suggested a Bailey flyover. The Army said they could build it. The local council said they didn't want it, so they didn't have it. But in Scotland, the Territorials were asked to build a Bailey Bridge at Murrayfield. A 150-foot bridge was wanted, crossing a river, 
into the car park for an international rugby match. The job was tackled by the Edinburgh troop of the parachute engineers, all 36 of them part-time soldiers. What these lads lacked in experience, they made up in enthusiasm. They left their factories and offices after work, climbed into their uniforms and set to. are built in bays. As each bay is completed, the bridge is rolled out further across the gap. Bay by bay, the bridge is pushed out until the launching nose touches down on the rollers on the far bank. The bridge is jacked down from its rollers onto a firm base and it's then ready for use. One thousand five hundred cars cross the bridge into the car park. It took only 11 hours to build and would have lasted for years if necessary. There are many other places where Bailey bridging could be used temporarily to ease congestion while permanent bridges are being designed and built. The building of the Chiswick flyover at one of London's busiest junctions disrupted traffic for 31 months before it was completed. The London County Council battled for 13 years to get Parliament's sanction for a loan to build the new concrete Waterloo Bridge and in the end they made a start without it. Although the first patent for reinforced concrete was taken out by an Englishman in 1808, its possibilities for bridge building were very largely ignored in this country. Since the war, the Cement and Concrete Association has run courses for bridge engineers in the latest techniques of concrete construction. Here, a beam is being tested to destruction. But although concrete has replaced brick and stone and timber, for the very longest spans, there is still no rival to steel. Beside the old fourth bridge, a new steel bridge is being built, a suspension bridge for road traffic over 4,000 feet long. It'll be finished in about four years' time, 35 years after the first investigations began. Nobody can accuse us of rushing into things, but one thing is certain. The new fourth bridge will be the most advanced suspension bridge anywhere in the world. Its closest rivals will be in Britain also, the new suspension bridges over the River Severn and the Humber. It seems at last as if we are embarking on a new era of greatness in our bridge building. The new fourth road bridge will be a fitting companion to the old railway bridge, each of them a monument to the engineering genius of its day. Old bridges, of course, have to be maintained. And on the fourth bridge, 29 painters are kept busy year in, year out. They use 17 tons of paint to cover 145 acres of steel. We shall be spending tens of millions of pounds on bridges in the next few years. We want only the best, but we shall not get them unless we give our best designers the opportunities they deserve.